Hello friends, welcome to our channel. So in today's session, let us have a look on a one more algorithm related to asymmetric key encryption. So in the previous sessions, we have seen two algorithms, the data encryption standard DES algorithm and advanced encryption standard that is AES algorithm. So uh, both the algorithms are related to the symmetric key encryption. So the symmetric encryption means whatever the keys we are using at the encryption side, we have to use the same keys on decryption side. So here in today's session, let us have a look an example algorithm for asymmetric key encryption. So in the asymmetric encryption, there will be two keys. One is public key and another one is a private key. The name itself indicates the public key is public to all the users in the network. So for every user in the network will be having both the keys, public key and private key. So here the public key is public to all the users in the network and private key should not be shareable between all. So it must be kept secret. So the only user can use this private key. So if one key is used at encryption side and we have to use the other key of same pair at the decryption process. So that we call it as asymmetric encryption. So for every user, there will be public key and a private key. If the public key is used in encryption, we have to use a private key of the same user in the decryption process. So let us have a look on algorithm that is RSA. So this is a RSA algorithm, which is an example for asymmetric key encryption. Here we have to find both the public key and private key and one key should be used at encryption and the other key should be used at decryption. So for this process, we have to consider, first we have to consider the two prime numbers. Consider two large prime numbers Let us say it as P and Q P Q So here P Q are two large prime numbers So this is very important Large prime numbers In order to be this algorithm very secure We have to use the large prime numbers Next, after considering this P and Q, calculate N, which is equal to P into Q, the product of two prime numbers. Then, calculate Phi of N, that is Euler's Toshan function. Euler's Toshan function. So P minus 1 into Q minus 1. So Euler's Toshan function phi of n is equal to P minus 1 and Q minus 1. So I will explain about this Euler Toshan function once I have completed this uh, RSA algorithm, writing this RSA algorithm. So after calculating this phi of n, now we have to calculate or refine the public key and the private key. Now, assume E. E means a public key which we have to use in encryption side. Assume E such that the GCD of E comma this Euler's Toshan function phi of n should be equal to 1. So in other words we can say it as we have to assume E such that E should be a co-prime to phi of n. 
co prime. So, in other words, we can say that assume we have to assume E, we have to select the E such that the GCD of E comma calculated phi of n that is the Euler's Torsion function should be equal to 1. Next, so after finding out this E, now we have to calculate the decryption, I mean private key which is used at decryption. That we represent it as D. Assume D such that D is equal to, so sorry, D congruently modulo of congruent equal to E power minus 1 mod phi of n. D congruent equal to, I have, I have mentioned here, triple lines. So, if we write double line, it is called equal. Triple line, it is called congruent modulo. It is called congruence modulo. Now, so from this, we have to find out the E. So, in order to convert this congruent modulo into E is equal to, so we have to apply the mod operation on both sides. So, I will simplify this. D into E congruent modulo of 1 mod phi of n. So, this becomes equal to once you multiply mod on both sides. So, apply this mod operation d e mod phi of n is equal to 1 mod phi of n. So, this always equal to 1. 1 mod phi of n is always equal to 1. So, this can be written as d into e mod phi of n is equal to 1. So, we have to assume d value such that d into e mod phi of n is equal to 1. So, I will replace this one with this simplified one. So, I am converting the congruence modulo to is equal to d into e mod phi of n is equal to 1. So, I have to find out the value of d. Now, after calculating this e and d, now we had uh, the public key and a private key. So, here the public key is encryption comma n and private key is the decryption comma n right so after finding out this one at the encryption side so at the encryption side we will get the ciphertext right so we have to select them sorry we, we have to consider the plain text message that must be less than 1. So, plain text message which is less than small n. And convert, so find out the ciphertext. Ciphertext is equal to plain text power E mod n. So, this is a formula to find out the ciphertext. We will get the ciphertext. Next, at the decryption process. At the decryption process, we have to convert the ciphertext to the plain text. So, we will get the plain text. Plain text is equal to ciphertext power D mod N. Plain text is equal to C power D ciphertext power D that is a private key mod N. So, like this, we have to calculate the ciphertext and the plain text. So here, first of all, we are generating the keys, public key and private key. 
so this is called a key generation so all these steps are key generation so once this keys are assumed then we have to do the encryption process and after this encryption process we will get the cipher text and this cipher text should be decrypted in the decryption process to the plain text message so in this process we are using encryption i mean public key in the encryption and private key in the decryption so one key we are using at the encryption side the other key we are using at the decryption side so that's why we call this algorithm as an example for rsa that is asymmetric key encryption algorithm so hope you understood so once again this very important is we have to consider the large prime numbers so we can consider very small prime numbers like 3 5 7 and all these uh, all these things so if you find this large prime numbers then that implies our algorithm is more secure so it is not vulnerable to the brute force attack the possibilities are very less the attacking possibilities are very less so we always we have to consider the large prime numbers so once again i will repeat first we have to consider the large prime numbers p and q and then we have to calculate the product of two prime numbers n and then we have to calculate phi of n that is euler's totient function so here i have to explain the euler's totient function so see euler's totient function euler's totient function of 10 for example let us take this 10 so we have to write the numbers from 1 to 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 these are the euler's totient functions so write down the factors of 10 factors of 10 that is 2 5 now cross over all the multiples of all the factors that means 2 4 6 8 10 10 5 5 and 10 and count the remaining 1 2 so this is 1 2 3 4 so euler's totient function of 10 is 4 so once again i'm saying that euler's totient function finding the euler's totient function means first write down the numbers from 1 to given euler's totient number then write down the factors and cross the multiples of all the factors so count the remaining that will be the value of euler's totient function so for this simply if the number is prime that means if we want to find the euler's totient function for a prime number see if for example 5 we have to find the euler's totient function uh, for the number 5 that means i have to write all the numbers from 1 2 5 write right down the factors 5 so cross over the multiples of factors that means 1 2 3 4 so because the prime number will be having only the factors 1 and itself so that number we are crossing so only four numbers will be considered as your association function of 5 so that's why we can simplify as Euler's totient function of p is equal to p minus 1 if p is a prime if p is a prime so for prime numbers the euler's totient function is p minus 1 so hope you understood this uh, euler's totient function here we are considering p into q that means p is a prime number and q is a prime number so euler's totient function of m is p minus 1 into q minus 1 so like this we have to find this euler's totient function and then from this euler's totient function we have to calculate the value of e which is a public key and then we have to calculate the value of d which is a private key and the public key is e comma n 
private key is D comma N. At the encryption process, we have to convert the plain text into ciphertext. So ciphertext is equal to plain text power E mod N. Here he is a public key. And in the decryption, here we are using the public key. So in the decryption, we have to use the private key. For that purpose, we have so decryption means the conversion of ciphertext to plain text. So the result is a plain text message. So message, plain text message, M stands for plain text message. C stands for ciphertext. Plain text message is equal to ciphertext power D, which is a private key mod N. Right? So hope you understood this RSC algorithm. Now let us look at a simple example so that you can uh, clearly get it. See, for simple calculations, I will consider small numbers. But in order to uh, be this uh, RSA more secure, we have to consider the large primes. So let it be P is equal to 3, Q is equal to 5. Now, N is equal to P into Q, which is 15. And phi of n is equal to p minus 1 into q minus 1 which is equal to 2 into 4 that is 8 so phi of n is equal to 8 so after calculating this yolo station function we have to find out the public key and the private key so i have to find the public key so the gcd value of e comma phi of n should be is equal to 1. So I will assume here e as 3. So we can assume 3 or 5 or 7 anything. So for 3, 5, 7 we will get the GCD for all these 3 values 1. So GCD of 3 comma 8 is 1. GCD of 5 comma 8 is 1. GCD of 7 comma 8 is also 1. So I will consider 3. Let us consider 3 as a e value. So e is equal to 3. Now I have to find out the d value. So in order to find the d value, so d into e mod phi of n should be equal to 1. So that means d into 3 mod 8 is equal to 1. So we will get, so here we will get, let us take here 3. 3 into 3 that is 9, 9 mod 8. 9 mod 8 which is equal to 1. So we can consider these as 3. So uh, moving on to the other numbers we can also find uh, some other number which is which satisfies this condition so here i am considering this three simple uh, three as a d, d value so here d value is also a three so, so if you consider the small numbers as i have said that the security is very less because here you can observe that public key and private key are equal so if the public key and private key are equal so it is easily vulnerable, vulnerable for the attacker. So if you consider the large numbers, definitely you can get the different value for D value. So for simple calculations, I have considered the small values. So once uh, you check with the large numbers using a calculator, and if you find any difficulty, please let me know the values so that I will uh, solve your or uh, clarify your doubts. So here e is equal to d and 3 and d is equal to 3. So here the public key is equal to e comma n which is equal to 3 comma here n is 15. And private key is equal to d comma n which is equal to 3 comma 15. 
so here both the uh, public key and private key are three next at the encryption side consider plain text message as four so i have to convert the which is less than n cipher text is equal to plain text power e mod n that is equal to plain text 4 power e e is 3 3 mod 15 here 64 mod 15 which is equal to 4 15 fours are 60 so 4 will be the remainder c is equal to 4 the cipher text is also a 4 and then at the decryption process at the decryption process consider the plain text message is equal to c power d mod n which is equal to again 4 power 3 mod n so mod n means here 15 4 power 3 mod n so here the cipher text is also a 3 so 4 mod 4 power 3 mod 15 which is again equal to 64 mod 15 which is equal to 4 here again plain text is equal to 4 so which we have considered in the encryption process so plain text is equal to 4 cipher text is equal to so and so and at the decryption also we got the 4 value so this is only for the simple values so once you try with the large primes so consider p is equal to some 11 and q is equal to some 19 and do the problem using the calculator so that we can, you, you will get the plain text message in the decryption process right so hope you understood this uh, simple rsa algorithm very very important algorithm so this is an example for asymmetric key encryption algorithm so two keys will be there one key will be used at encryption and the other key will be used at decryption process so let's stop here so if you hope you understood this rsa algorithm so if you are having any doubts regarding this rsa algorithm or if you are not unable to uh, solve the problem with a, with your own values so please feel free to post your doubts in the comment section so that i will try to clarify your doubts and if you like my video share my videos with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.